Representative Daniels is here now, so let's talk a little bit with him. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd love to, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the governor's speech tonight. Well, I thought that the speech was decent. I think that there are some areas that uh, we may be far apart, but for the most part, uh, I agree with a lot of what the governor said. Uh, I do feel that there are some things left out that should have been mentioned, uh, such as eliminating the tax for overtime pay, uh, removing the sales tax off of groceries. And so a lot of the, right now, families uh, across the state of Alabama uh, are feeling that uh, with the taxes on gross and a large increase in prices. Uh, imagine uh, someone going to the store two years ago to buy eggs and going to the store today. And so we're, they're experiencing a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of increase in pricing across the board on all groceries and items in general. And so focusing more on our supply chain, figuring out ways to increase productivity so that we're able to, to kind of control the demand uh, and, and, and see a surplus in, in a lot of the items that we need, which will long term will drive down costs, but also engage some of our local consumers, I mean, uh, our local uh, farmers and, and others, and making certain that they're able to get their products to our local grocery stores and, and become competitive a, as well. And so those are some of the things that I'd like to have seen in the speech. Uh, from an education standpoint, uh, I think that we need more depth and cradle to pre-K. Pre-K is great, but until every child in Alabama, regardless of their zip code, have access to a quality education or education in general with the mixed delivery system, whether it's a church daycare or a standalone for-profit daycare, a child care center. Uh, and so we want to make certain that they have a good, a strong start. If we're go if they're going to have a strong start and start a strong finish, it has to start from birth to pre-K. Because long term, you'll able to uh, be able to make more investments on the front end. It'll save you on the back end. We've heard the saying, uh, the statistic before, that every dollar that's invested in pre-K saves you seven dollars in corrections. And so, for me, being someone from rural Alabama, from uh, Bullock County, a little small town called Midway. Having opportunities for an early childhood education program, I think the people are doing great uh, with the programs that they have, but giving them an opportunity to expand that so that every child in that community have access to a quality education from the beginning. And so those are some of the things that I would have liked to see in the speech from an education standpoint. I think that 2% is modest. I do think our education support personnel, uh, a 2% uh, for those low, low, low paid employees is not necessarily enough. I, I agree that our teachers should be paid uh, well, I mean, what they're worth, and we should be competitive with the rest of the country. Uh, but at the same time, our support personnel that are at, the, at our at our schools, uh, we need to make certain that we're making their salaries and their their um, uh, hourly wages more competitive, uh, so that we're able to retain them. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we want all, all of Alabama to be able to work. But we have to make certain that we're putting money back in the pocket of the working class Alabamians like never before by giving them a tax cut. Uh, the other areas I didn't hear anything on, on the health care front. Uh, I did hear a little, you know, about rural, rural health care, but I think in telemedicine, but we got to expand that. We got to be more comprehensive. Uh, approximately, there have been approximately 15 to 17 hospital closures in the last 11 years, and so I would have liked to have had her to address some of those issues and how we're going to solve that problem. Because at the end of the day, health care outcomes matter. We've, saw, we've seen the, the vulnerabilities that uh, existed that was exposed during COVID uh, of a lot of our communities, a lot of people we've lost uh, throughout the state of Alabama. But those individuals that really had, we had no very little to no knowledge about the, the actual um, pandemic and the virus. And so, but they didn't have access to, readily available access to primary care physicians in their communities. And so those are a lot of issues. I, I heard her mention about pro-life. Um, and, and being a pro uh, pro uh, Wade Bo, uh, Roe v Wade uh, society, I think there should have been things in there that talked about the removal, uh, making an exception for rape and incest, so that a, a person that doesn't has uh, that, that that's been raped or incest, uh, you know, have options. That wasn't mentioned. The preventative side of the health care um, argument wasn't really mentioned on that. But all in all, the things that the governor did mention, I applaud her on those efforts. Uh, I do think that there's a separation. We're far apart on the school choice issue. 
uh, school choice is not necessarily solving the problems. We've seen pieces of legislation relative to uh, uh, savings account. That's not the uh, the governor didn't exactly mention that. And so she talked about independent schools like the cybersecurity engineering school that's in, in North Alabama, uh, the art school, performing arts school in Birmingham, uh, the school, there's a math and science school down in Mobile. And I'm very happy that she mentioned the health sciences school down in the Black Belt area. And so these are these are innovative things, and I applaud the governor for, for taking that approach. But on a broader scale, I mentioned four cities where there are independent schools but allowing the existing public education infrastructure to be able to do pathways. When you go to communities, whether it's Oakland Unified School District in California, where you see young people that may have an interest in public health, well, they will be on the public health track or engineering. So that school system, that school district allows those options so that students will go in the areas that they're interested in. And it yields tremendous outcomes from birth to career. Representative Anthony Daniels, a Democrat in the legislature, I didn't have to ask a single question. Thank you for covering all of the issues for us tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I look forward to, to continuing this relationship and getting the message out there to all Alabamians uh, to pay attention to what's going on in the Alabama legislature. Best of luck in this year's session.